The Combine Empire's invasion of planet Earth led to the oppression of humanity. On this conquered planet, many giant structures were constructed and modifications were made to already existing buildings to allow this multi-dimensional alien empire to solidify their grasp and control of the species. Using these locations, the Combine could then set up strongholds so that their future operations could be organised and constructed, and one of these structures became one of the Combine's most impressive failures. What was this architectural masterpiece? How important was this structure to the Combine? And what ultimately happened to it? Here we explore in the lore and story behind the Combine's dark tower, the Citadel of City 17. After a brutal seven hour war between the Combine and the population of planet Earth, the dominating alien empire accepted the submission of humanity in return for their lives. With this species now under their control, the Combine just needed to set up strong points across the planet where they could monitor and control the humans as they took the natural resources the planet had to offer. To hold humanity, the Combine developed settlements across the planet, each labelled a city with a number, and within the centre of each of these, they constructed large towers, which became known as citadels. In planning, these towers would help the Combine increase their hold over humanity, where they could house their troops, develop new synthetics, communicate with their homeworld, send out raids, and various other methods of keeping the humans in line. But they would take years to construct. Within City 17, located in Eastern Europe, the Combine began construction on the Citadel that would change everything. With a spot chosen, using their advanced technology, the Combine sent through a core from their overworld to Earth. This core would power the Citadel for the next two decades before its ultimate failure. With the core in place, the Combine got to work and built an initial frame where construction began. On their exploration of the multiverse, the Combine had conquered countless species, and upon their defeat, they moved on to their next step, mutilation. As each species lived completely differently in their environments, the Combine experimented with their biology to add strength and variety to their armies. This variety helped them in their construction of the citadels, as some of these species could work easily on the bottom levels, while others could fly and carry huge amounts of resources to the builders at the higher levels. Taking advantage of Earth's natural resources, the alien empire procured whatever materials they could find, and using their technologies, adapted these mundane materials into the strong, blue metallic material that the Combine would become known for. Due to the size of this structure, the Combine had to make space for it. For this, they brought in smart barriers, large pieces of machinery capable of demolishing and repurposing whatever got in their way into whatever the Combine required. These smart barriers allowed them to knock down blocks of buildings and obstructions with ease so that the project would not be inhibited. Following the destruction of these obstructions, the smart barriers were then set in place to stop access to the Citadel from anyone deemed untrustworthy of access. Not only did the Citadel require space above ground, but the Combine also had to make space below ground for the core to be placed in a secure location, out of reach from any that would seek to damage it. Using more of their machinery, restrictors, a giant chasm was constructed, which helped the Combine in two ways. The first, to create a divide between the city and the citadel, so that anyone who was able to somehow bypass the smart barriers would not be able to reach the structure. And secondly, to allow room for expansion if the Combine required it. The vibrations from these restrictors also generated enough activity so that the antlion, a species that had arrived from Zen, were also put off from travelling near the construction zone and getting in the way of progress. Fifteen years after the invasion of the Combine, the construction of the Citadel in City 17 made great progress. With enough work completed, the core was already moved below ground, where it could now safely power the structure without fear of it being damaged. 
Not only did this include Earth's natural dangers of weather, but it also meant the growing resistance movement that worked in the shadows to hold the growth and power the Combine had on the planet. From this core, the Citadel was also noted to have large wires connected from the tower to various locations across the city, likely constructed to power Combine technology in the area. Over the next five years, the exterior of the Citadel was completed, where the Combine could now make proper use of the space inside to aid in their control of the planet. Although other Citadels had been constructed across Earth, the Citadel in City 17 would eventually become the Combine's main base of operations due to Planet Earth's administrator moving here, Dr. Wallace Breen, the man that had negotiated the peace deal between humanity and the Combine 20 years before. While the Citadel in City 17 was extremely tall and wide, it is unknown whether the Citadels in other locations also looked the same, or even served the same purpose, but this one would become one of the Combine's most important architectural developments in the war to come. Constructed from the bottom up, the deep underground region of the Citadel was designed to hold its core, the power source of the tower and connected equipment. Believed to be located approximately one kilometer underground, this giant chamber was fitted with large blast doors to protect the connecting rooms and its inhabitants from the dangerous radioactive nature of the core. Within this chamber, stalkers, mindless human converted husks, were designated to operate the machinery within and keep the core stable. Looking out over this large chamber, a control room was strategically placed for Overwatch soldiers to control and manage the core, as well as an elevator to enter it if they needed to. While the core becoming unstable was an unlikely scenario, in the event it did, three separate chambers were designed to help stabilize it, each fitted with a device to strengthen its containment field. This bottom section of the Citadel was also home to a depot where Razor trains could stop in on their journey through the wasteland. With the Citadel being the most important building for the Combine in this sector, the import of cargo such as stalkers, prisoners and materials was important and essential to the operation of the Citadel. From here, the materials were then distributed to the correct sections of the structure. Moving further up, closer to the next level, a chamber was developed to not only hold the Combine advisors in their pods, but also to allow quick evacuation in the event the humans were able to seize control of the Citadel or if the core became unstable. From this chamber, a large tube allowed access to the higher regions of the Citadel for easy evacuation. Moving upwards towards the center or middle of the Citadel, above ground, this segment was designed merely to allow the transportation of materials, livestock and prisoners between the lower region and the higher regions, with various forms of elevators, pipes and conduits of energy. Due to the Combine's initiation of human-based Combine units in the form of the Overwatch soldier, they designed walkways so that this human population could navigate the structure. In combination with this, they also installed force fields to restrict the access of unauthorized personnel and also a containment field to confiscate any unauthorized weaponry and equipment. With this advanced technology on this level, the stalkers brought in from the lower levels were used to operate and maintain them. These mindless husks would wander from machine to machine without question, obeying only the combine rule, unable to think for themselves. To add to their workload, the Combine also used the space to house their gunships and dropships. Upon returning from their missions, the Stalkers would get to work to restore them in preparation for their next outing. Just below the holding location of these airborne Combine units, various other land-based units would navigate the claustrophobic holes below, where it is likely the Stalkers would also see to these two to make sure they were ready for battle if needed. With a war still ongoing with the Resistance and the need to uphold their control of humanity, the Combine designated factories to convert the Resistance of humanity into more Stalkers, 
just like they did at Nova Prospect, where it is also believed that other factories were used to develop other synthetics, such as mortar synths and the crab synth. In their construction of this building, the Combine had been efficient in the use of materials and minimalistic design in their need to use only what they needed. With this location being a stronghold for the alien empire, they treated it as such with the strongest and most trusted soldiers they had, the Overwatch Elite. These genetically modified human soldiers were stationed to protect the Citadel from any threat and to defend this building with their lives. Alongside this, scanners also frequently patrolled the structure searching for unusual activity in this cold, alien building. Aside from the core, the top region of the Citadel was planned to be the home of the Combine's most important operations. From this high altitude, the gunships and dropships and other airborne Combine units were deployed with these out into City 17 and the surrounding wasteland on missions. At the top of the Citadel, the office of Dr. Wallace Breen was designed to look out over the city. In contrast to the bleak and soulless feel of the rest of the Citadel, his office did have some thought put into it, where a sense of humanity was placed inside of this room. In this office, he conducted his work in a somewhat familiar surrounding. Behind his desk, Breen also had a monitor that allowed him direct contact with the Combine advisors, the creatures seemingly high up in the rankings of the alien empire. But with the Combine consisting of an unknown number of species and planets, only these appeared to manage the control of Earth. There may have been many higher up in the chain of command. From his office, Breen had some power over the Citadel. In the event the Resistance or a threat to the Combine was detected, he had the ability to trigger the Citadel to enter an alerted state, which would reconfigure the structure of the entire building. In this adjusted formation, the Combine units stationed at the top such as dropships, gunships, scanners, and many others, would leave the building with ease through newly available exit points to track down the subject at large. With such a major change, this would only be used in situations of extreme importance, one of which would occur following the return of Dr. Gordon Freeman. In the history of this building, it was documented that the Citadel had only used its natural state and alerted state, but there may have been many other configurations that were never seen. From the top of the Citadel, Breen's office also allowed him access to the prison system, which appeared to flow through the entire building. Using this, he could call up captured Resistance members to his office with ease. Directly from his room, this office led to the highest section and arguably the most important part of the Citadel, a communication station and a tunneling entanglement teleportation device powered by a dark fusion reactor. A direct tunnel to the Combine overworld. With this communication, the Combine could monitor and control the human population from afar, and if humanity were to attempt to rise up against them, they could easily bring Combine forces through to regain control. As powerful as this tunneling device and connected dark fusion reactor were, it still worked in a limited capacity. This device could only tunnel through to another universe and not a location within the same one, something humanity had actually managed to perfect. The Combine Empire had created something great here, but all great technology has the risk of failure if used incorrectly or is tampered with, and they would learn this the hard way. 20 years after the Combine's initial invasion, the resistance movement expanded as Gordon Freeman returned following his disappearance just before the Seven Hour War. Upon his arrival, the resistance grew, united and eventually led a charge through City 17. Fighting together, block by block, the resistance managed to reclaim parts of their city, adding more members to their cause along the way. During this conflict, Dr. Wallace Breen had managed to capture the leader of this resistance, Dr. Eli Vance, and later, his daughter, Alex. Both of these were not only extremely important to Gordon, but to the future of humanity. Upon gaining access to the Citadel by having a robot lift up a section of a smart barrier, 
Gordon Freeman made his way through to the middle level of the structure, killing the combined soldiers standing guard that got in his way. And here, he saw with his own eyes just what the Combine had managed to create. Regardless of whether Gordon agreed with the Combine's views or not, this place was a masterpiece. During his time in the Citadel, Gordon stepped inside of a prison pod and rode it right up to the office of Dr. Breen, where he was reunited with his friends. Through this short meeting, an altercation occurred in Breen's office, leaving Breen to flee up to the top of the Citadel where he asked his Combine overlords for help. In response, they offered him a host body and access to the Combine overworld through the portal powered by the Dark Fusion Reactor. All he needed to do was ride up to the portal as it opened. On his trail, Gordon followed Breen to the top of the Citadel. In an attempt to stop Breen from escaping, Gordon used his gravity gun to pull out a concentrated sphere of dark energy plasma that powered most of the Citadel and launched it directly into the reactor. Upon impact, the reactor exploded, destroying everything around it. This moment began the fall of the Citadel. Almost instantly, this destruction left huge ramifications throughout the rest of the structure. In the underground levels of the Citadel, fires began to erupt and the structure became unstable. The destruction of the reactor at the top of the Citadel meant that it would fall shortly after, but the Combine units on Earth still needed to send a message to the Combine overworld, and to do this, they needed to trigger a super portal. For this to occur, Combine units travelled to the core and destabilised it. They believed that when it collapsed, a huge surge of energy would trigger a super portal to form. In this dire situation, the Combine soldiers stationed here began to evacuate as they left the Stalkers to continue their work to keep the core running just long enough for them to escape. Although the core's destruction would give the Combine the chance to re-establish contact with the Overworld, the amount of power in this explosion would also level the entirety of City 17, killing everything within. Some say this Dark Flare's destructive power was equivalent to an atomic bomb. As the Citadel fell further into chaos, Alex Vance and Gordon Freeman re-entered the structure with the hope to stabilise the core, just for long enough for their fellow Resistance members and refugees to escape the city. Upon entering the chamber of the Citadel core, Gordon managed to successfully restore the containment field using the machinery to hand, and this gave him and Alex enough time to escape the city with their allies. Then, the inevitable happened. The core destabilised once more and exploded, sending out the force of an atomic bomb, levelling City 17. In the wake of this planned disaster by the remaining combine units, they just had to wait for a super portal to form from its ashes. This event was felt across the globe as the mass destruction here had a domino effect, where the citadel scattered in the major combine settlements across Earth also subsequently shut down, leaving the combine alone, ready to be taken down by the strong resistance. The Citadel of City 17 was designed and constructed to help the mighty Combine Empire maintain their control over the unfortunate population of planet Earth. While this was not the only Citadel constructed on the planet, with its becoming the home of Earth's administrator, and its destruction at the hands of the Resistance made it one of the most important pieces of architecture that the Combine had created on Earth. After its destruction, all that remained was a super portal, formed from the mass concentration of energy that had left from the core's meltdown. The citadel had fallen, but the super portal could bring back the combine direct access to planet Earth if it were to mature, and just maybe give them the chance to reconquer the planet. An unknown number of citadels had been constructed on Earth, but from the brief view of the combine's overworld just before the destruction of the dark fusion reactor, it is said that there were many more citadels visible, just out of reach. A grand design of a building, for a grand task. If the Combine are able to recapture the planet, then just maybe, they can rebuild another citadel in the place of the one that had fallen, and regain control of humanity, where they can once again reign supreme.
The construction of the citadel clashes in canon a little. In Raising the Bar, we're told that part of the city vanished as the Combine delivered the citadel to Earth. While in Half-Life Alex, we see the construction of the citadel, and we learn that the core of the citadel was delivered to Earth. I was confused about this, and luckily came across an Ask Me Anything on Reddit by Half-Life Alex's creators, where they stated that the core was delivered. I guess that overwrites what we know. The Citadel is an iconic part of the Half-Life story, and what I love about these games is that there was so much thought put into the development of the buildings. We all know that Half-Life 2 went through various storylines, graphical designs and tones, and the Citadel went through these too. Here we'll cycle through. Here we have the organic version from the beta, the dark, gloomy version of Half-Life 2 that we never received. I love this design. We cycle through to the poster style, tiles, E3, clamp, pre-retail, and finally, the version we received. As I said, I do like the version of the Citadel we received, but my favourite by far is the organic version from the beta. I guess I just like the dark and gloomy feel better. Organic also indicates it is alive to some effect, which adds more to the horror of the Combine Empire. Interestingly enough, on the Half-Life wiki, it suggests that the current design is reminiscent of a monument in Aberystwyth University, which was my second choice for university. I ended up going somewhere else though. It also looks like the Bayonet Memorial in Zelenograd in Russia, which I guess makes sense with the Eastern European style of the games. Finally, for the most interesting piece of information, in my opinion anyway, it's not canon or fact, but a Reddit user, RS Green Road, attempted to calculate just how big the Citadel is. I don't know how they did this because maths is hard, but apparently, it'd be almost as tall as Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on our planet. If it did exist, that'd be crazy. This large, open, soulless building was once regarded as a place of power for the Combine, and is an iconic part of Half-Life. Regardless of which version of Half-Life we would have received, it appears that Valve wanted a central building that the Combine could dominate from. I know I say this in every video, but I really enjoyed working on this one. The Citadel is iconic and much more interesting than it initially appears to be. Each section was designed for a purpose, and I'm glad we got to explore it, in the different states in different games. My favourite Citadel moment is when it opens up just after Breen sees Gordon for the first time after he is released from stasis. Valve are great at creating memorable locations and moments. Ravenholm had its own feel, City 17 did too, and so did the Citadel. We see this ominous building in the backdrop throughout most of our journey, and it is iconic. It felt alien but not too futuristic, which I preferred. My final thought is that I would have loved to see what the other citadels look like in the other cities, and how they functioned. I'd like to think that they all had their own look, but maybe that's just me. As of recording, I do want to apologise if my voiceover is a little more relaxed. We're having a heatwave in the UK at the moment, and I'm ginger so the heat is affecting me super bad, and I just feel drained and tired. I hate the sun. I, I prefer winter. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate it if you could leave a like or a comment on your thoughts to boost that algorithm. It would help a lot. I would also like to thank my patrons and channel members who are on the screen right now, and an extra special thank you to my gold tier patrons and channel members, Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, and Mr. M791. What did you think of this lore? Did you like the Citadel as a location? And would you have liked to explore the other Citadels on planet Earth? Or even on the Combine Overworld, if that would have been possible somehow? Let me know in the comments below. Now Overwatch, enjoy your day. Bye.